Hey everyone, what's going on? Welcome back to another video. And today's video is going to be a little different. Um, basically, we're going to be talking about Apple today. You all know Apple. As you probably know by now, Apple has recently, and by recently I mean it's actually going on quite a while now, it's been a few months, but has recently released their new MacBook Pros. There's been a lot of controversy over these because, you know, um, because of the design changes, the feature set changes, and then also a few of the issues they've been having with it. But today I just kind of want to talk about how there seems to be an Apple product that people are skipping over and not even considering um, that's actually kind of a really good deal right now. So let's just kind of start here. So on one hand, if you wanted to get yourself into the Mac world, you could purchase the new MacBook Pro, which uh, you can see I have up here. The only issue with this is it's freaking expensive. Uh, the baseline for the newest 13-inch MacBook Pro is $1,499. So $1,500 is the minimum price you will pay for the lowest spec MacBook Pro um, 2016 version. Um, but what you do get is you do get 8 gigs of RAM, which is pretty standard, 256 gig, PCI Express, SSD, decent integrated graphics. And I say decent, but I also said integrated. So, you know. And one of the bigger issues you get two thunderbolt 3 ports and that's it now if you want more than just those two ports because if you consider one of them will be taken by taken up by charging you only get one so if you want more you can always step it up to the 13 inch with the touch bar now basically the touch bar will replace the function keys with a little uh, touch screen like display um, people are complaining that that's just a half-assed touch screen Again, subject for another video. But you're going to pay upwards of $1,799. That's $1,800 for still only 8 gigs of RAM, still only a 256 gig PCI Express SSD, and not that much better. I mean, they're, they're decent integrated graphics. Again, I said integrated. So, But, you know, Apt Apple optimizes their software and hardware very well, so it's not a big issue. But keep in mind, that's what you're getting when it comes to graphics power. But you do get four Thunderbolt 3 ports here. So, I mean, now on the other hand, you have the MacBook. Now, this has recently just come back into their product line. I say recently, it was actually like two years ago at this point, but they stopped making the MacBook for a while, and then they came back with this uh, super thin, super light device. Um, it, it's, it's, it's a beautiful device, don't get me wrong, but it has one USB-C port on the side, and... It's hard to see there, but that's all it has. It has a headphone jack on the right, which I'm surprised they put in there. But that's it. So once you're charging, if you are if you have your laptop plugged in, you cannot do anything else with this device. And I guess the product technically is aimed at someone who does very, very basic tasks or doesn't need peripherals or something like that, which is fine until you see the price tag of $1,300. You're paying $1,300 for something that basically has the functionality of a netbook. I mean, obviously, it's better than a netbook, but you get what I'm coming from. And, you know, it's it's really hard to justify that expensive of a purchase when you're getting so little. But then there's that Mac in between those two that everyone seems to forget about, and that's the MacBook Air. Remember this? Look at that price tag. $999. That's like the cheapest Mac, that is the cheapest Mac laptop you can get. It has the best battery life of any Mac laptop you can get. And it's it's still extremely thin and extremely light. But you still get your MagSafe, which is lacking on the other ones. You get regular full-sized USB ports. And um, you still get flash storage and everything like that. It still runs the latest Mac operating system. So I, I think people tend to skip this over, but this is actually a really good deal right now, especially if you're looking to buy your first Mac or maybe you want to buy one for college and, you, you know, you're just typing papers and stuff on it. $9.99, you get that same 128 gigs of flash storage, that same 8 gigs of memory as the other models. You get a decent processor. Again, Mac optimi or Apple optimizes their hardware and software very well, so you won't notice any sluggishness with that. And integrated graphics, but that's pretty much what you get with all Mac machines on the lower level. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's still a very awesome option for getting into, you know, the Apple ecosystem. If you just, if it's your first time stepping into a Mac or 
maybe you want a Mac, but you don't want to spend a whole boatload of money, that's about as good as it gets right there. And then you can always upgrade the, the flash here. Again, I guess my point is the MacBook Air right now is a really awesome deal. So do not fail to consider the MacBook Air if you're looking to purchase a new Mac. You know, you don't have to go with the newest, most expensive, expensive option. Now, they haven't refreshed this in a while, which kind of leads me to believe that maybe they're not going to be keeping this around that much longer, but at least it'll be supported for a while. I mean, it's not like they're going to stop making it and then completely drop it, because I still have a 2009 white unibody MacBook that uh, still runs the latest Mac OS and runs it well at that. So, you know, really good option here. Keep this in consideration. It's actually a really good deal. So that's pretty much all for today's video. I know it was a little boring maybe, but I just wanted to kind of put my opinion in on that and kind of share my thoughts on um, on the MacBook Air and how it's, how it's still a viable option. So thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you in the next video.